Neat opening and a great pile of possibilities. But you need more female authors, dude. Hello, everyone. Welcome to and welcome back to my channel, Book Time with Elvis with me, Mark. And I hope so much you're all doing very well. And welcome to another episode of Monday Musings. And once again, I've chosen a comment from a previous video that kind of inspired this video and kick-started a, a thought process uh, such as it is these days within my, my brain. Now, I have absolutely nothing uh, negative to say about the person who made the comment at all, and I really appreciate it. Uh, for one thing, giving me the inspiration, as I say, to make this particular video. But it got me thinking, and I have no idea if the commenter was joking or being serious, or whether they know this kind of thing um, frustrates me somewhat, because I do believe I'm someone who doesn't care one way or the other. Now, that maybe that makes me wrong uh, as a person that I don't care, but I really don't care who the author of a book is that I'm going to read. I'm more interested in the subject matter and the content. Now, I do care, of course, who the author is, if it's somebody I want to avoid because I don't like their work, or if it's somebody I want to read because I do like their work. But if it's completely new to me, I don't look at the author. I don't look into their background. doesn't mean anything to me. But it got me thinking, of course. It got me thinking because it's always, you know, one of these topics. I mean, I made a video myself about uh, why I don't read female authors. Of course, it was a bit uh, tongue-in-cheek and a bit clickbaity to get you to watch it, uh, where I said I would try and make more of an effort to do so. And perhaps, to some degree, I am a bit more aware and, and will try where possible. But I realized that it's kind of inauthentic for me to do that, because it's not really something, as I say, that I believe in or that I find uh, particularly important when choosing the book you know, the gender of the author, and for that matter, the race of the author as well, or the politics of the author. Well, maybe the politics a bit more, I have to say, because if I know the person has a particular political stance that, you know, doesn't agree with my own to the point where I find it infuriating uh, and it does me no good to read it, then in that particular instance, then perhaps I will be somewhat prejudicial with that author. Um, but this topic is extremely interesting. It got me thinking about, um, you know, I've seen booktubers who talk about things like, oh yeah, I spent the entire year of 2010, uh, you know, reading female authors. Why? You know, why? Or I spent the entire year of, you know, 2008 reading books by East Asian lesbians. Okay, good for you. You know, if that floats your boat, if you're interested in that, that's good. But, you know, shouting about it on, um, you know, platforms like this and saying, well, look at me, look how, uh, look how diverse I am, look how, um, you know, tolerant I am, fine. But then by doing that, aren't you also, to some degree, being a bit discriminating in your choice of literature by saying you're only going to read books like that? I don't know. I want to say I love this series, Monday Musings, because I love your responses and, and comments. And of course, I'm no expert on anything. Uh, and most of this is me just thinking aloud and trying to provoke conversation uh, with the rest of you, which, of course, as I say, I value very greatly and appreciate a lot. And I thought, well, I could make this video all about, uh, you know, the importance of diversifying your, your gender and authors and race of authors that you read. Now, diversification in reading, of course, is a wonderful thing, but I do think you have to have the right um, motivation for doing so uh, and not do it for just form's sake or just to show off on your channel and say, look, you know, as I say, look how wonderfully diverse I am in my reading. To me, that's just kind of pointless and shallow and pointless, as I said, because, you know, we only have a finite number of years on this planet. What's the point of reading stuff you, you know, wouldn't naturally want to read or don't find particularly interesting just to show off uh, and say that you're a person who can do that kind of thing? You know, I could say I'm going to read uh, books by, uh, you know, transvestites from the subcontinent for the rest of the year, and I could do that, but is it really 
something that speaks to me? Is it something that I'm going to find interesting? Now, if one of you said to me, oh yeah, you must read this particular book by so-and-so who happens to be, uh, you know, a transgender person from the from from the uh, the subcontinent, fine. You know, it, I respect your recommendation. I respect you as a person uh, when it comes to making recommendations, so I will probably pick it up and give it a go. Now, if it's not something that speaks to me, then I'm not going to go back and read that kind of stuff, probably, because it's not what I want to read, because I only have a finite number of years to read, and I want to read what I enjoy, and I can't necessarily help what I enjoy. It's just that way, right? And if the majority of the books I enjoy happen to be written by men, and those men happen to be white, that's just the way it is, because after all, I am a white man. And therefore, some of what they have to say is going to speak to me more than a book aimed at speaking to young African-American males or young African-American women. You know, it's not something I can relate to. Which brings me on to the other thing that got me thinking, which is this whole idea of uh, cultural appropriation. Although I don't know why it's not better called cultural misappropriation. I would think that would be better. But hey, as I said, I'm no expert on anything. Um, and how difficult I think that is, you know, and it, it reminded me of a conversation I had a couple of years ago. Before I started YouTube, I had uh, a podcast, and uh, I have a good friend who happens to be an author, an author of children's books, and they are white, and they wrote a story uh, depicting uh, two young uh, Indian brothers, and of course, the book did very well, and it was no secret, you know, of course, the uh, the race of the, the author, and uh, I invited her to talk to me about it on my podcast, and then after, you know, it was literally, uh, I can't remember who was, um, what the story was exactly, but it was literally on the day I was going to put it out, something happened where uh, someone was criticized for uh, being a white author writing about somebody uh, of, of, of a different race. And then she thought, you know, probably it wouldn't be good for me to air that um, air that podcast. You know, didn't want to draw attention, especially uh, at the time. And I thought that was a real shame. And it got me thinking, well, you know, if you're a writer of fiction, part of fiction is imagining things and, you know, talking about things and imagining situations, which, of course, are not something necessarily relatable to you. Otherwise, it isn't completely fiction, is it? I mean, uh, I never hear of people getting upset if, uh, you know, an Asian woman wants to write about Vikings, for example. Now, obviously, there's no link uh, there. Is that not also cultural uh, misappropriation? I don't know. It seems to me that it might be, but it got me, I was, kind of, I was kind of upset because the interview was really great and the author's fantastic, the book itself is good. You know, if you're not allowed to write about, if you can only write about things you know, then it really limits you, doesn't it, as a writer? I mean, part of it is, I think as long as you remain respectful to a culture, why shouldn't you be able to write about it, you know? And then... How limited do these people who, who like, call out these authors and, you know, have a go at them for this kind of thing, how limited must that experience be? I mean, take me, for instance, right? I'm British by birth. I'm 43 years old. And I've probably spent a grand total of 11, 12 years living in the United Kingdom. The rest of the time I've been abroad. So my cultural experience is different. You know, I spent 10 years of my childhood uh, living in Bermuda. Now, if I wanted to write a book about uh, Bermuda, uh, why shouldn't I? Okay, I'm not Bermudian, but obviously I have experience of that culture. You know, I lived five years in Japan. If I want to write a book set in Japan... Why shouldn't I? Why would I be called out if perhaps one of my characters was, I don't know, a Japanese, let's say a Japanese man, because at least I can be half, half right. Um, and then people say, oh, no, you can't do that. It's, you know, cultural 
misappropriation. But is it? You know, I have experience of that. Just because you look at me and think, oh yeah, he's, he's a white British guy. He can't possibly write about anything other than characters who happen to be white British and, and then I suppose male. I don't know. I find I find the whole thing interesting, and also it, it, another thing that I think links into this is um, I remember. And I, I, I apologize because I can't remember who uh, the booktubers were, but I saw recently somebody was talking about the Italian uh, author um, Elena Ferrante. Now I don't know anything about her uh, and and her works. You know, I haven't read her. Um, but uh, they were they were hypothesizing over the uh, over the identity because you know she's somebody who's chosen uh, to remain anonymous as is her right and if she doesn't want to be discovered then I think you know people should should respect that and there may be good reasons for that uh, and then another um, I don't know if it was another booktuber or, an, or a commenter was saying oh yeah but you know she's really a he and uh, there was like this discussion about. Uh, you know, in a way that it was a negative thing, that suddenly uh, her works were now less uh, valuable or less important because, you know, she was no longer a she, but she was actually really a he. Now, I really can't understand that. If you read a book and it spoke to you and you enjoyed it, then it shouldn't matter at all what the gender of that author was or is, you know, it's like me saying, you know, it's like me picking up Middlemarch and knowing nothing about George Eliot and just assuming George Eliot was a man and saying, oh yeah, this is a great book, you know, oh, but you know George Eliot was a woman, no, okay, right, okay, load of rubbish, terrible book, you know, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna read anything by her anymore, you know, it's the same thing, isn't it? I don't know. It, it, it's like saying, I mean, how can you have any romance in books? Because the person writing the book is generally going to be of one particular gender, right? And within a, within a romance, you're probably going to have the points of view of a couple. Uh, let's say in this case, a straight heterosexual couple, right? And at some point, they're going to be writing from the point of view, perhaps, of the other person who's a different gender from them. But no, no, that might be gender misappropriation, right? So you can't do that. So therefore, you can only write about a one-sided romance or a person who may be in love with themselves, you know. <laughs> um, now, I know that's obviously a little bit ridiculous, but the whole thing, I think, is ridiculous. Now, we put ourselves out here and talk about what we're reading and we leave ourselves open, of course, to criticism. But by now, people who watch me know what I read, and they're not surprised, I would say, to find any, um, you know, they would be more surprised, perhaps, to see uh, more diversity. But I'm not going to diversify my reading for diversity's sake, right? I'm only going to do it out of respect for people who give me decent recommendations to do so, Um because, you know, I could spend hours of my life trawling through books, trying to find things that will speak to me just to come up to quota uh, of the number of either female authors, gay authors, or whatever I happen to read. Now, you know, it so happens I do read quite a lot of um, female authors. And with regard to the comment the person left, um, I read a lot of female historians, and I like a lot of female historians. It just so happens that the, the topics of the books I picked for the next quarter of Historathon um, weren't written by female historians. Well, one of them was. Actually, two of them were, because I actually left out, I forgot, because <laughs> I never thought this would be an issue, I forgot to mention that I'd also be reading A Distant Mirror by Barbara um, Tuchman. So, you know, that brought my thing up. But I suppose, you know, if we're talking quotas and things, I mentioned five historians, so we'll say six now, and two of them are women, so that probably is a reflection of uh, of reality when it comes to the popular historian market. Although, of course, it's shifting every time, and it makes me wonder, you know, when we go back and look at the likes of um, George Eliot, or perhaps even, uh, you know, Elena Ferrante, 
the motivation for people having to disguise their gender. Now, George Eliot obviously did it because she felt she wouldn't be taken seriously as a, as a female, writing in a male-dominated, um, you know, male-dominated uh, industry. And you have to wonder today why people do that, right? I mean, nobody, as far as I remember, did, if any, I mean, I could be wrong, and I often am, uh, and you'll no doubt let me know in the comments, but I remember when uh, J.K. Rowling uh, used a, a male pen name, I don't think it caused a huge outcry in terms of the fact that she was pretending to be a he. And of course, the main character in those books, and the main character in, in Harry Potter, for goodness sake, is an 11-year-old boy. What does she know about being an 11-year-old boy, right? We can say, no, no, she's not allowed to, you know, write about that. But what is the motivation for people doing it? And, you know, I, when I did look at, um, at that, uh, when I made that video about uh, reading female authors, it's very much on trend. I mean, you look at any um, award list these days or up-and-coming books, uh, let's say, in the United Kingdom, uh, there is a disproportionately large number of um, women and people from, of course, different uh, ethnic, cultural backgrounds, whatever you want to say, coming through. I'm not going to make any comments on the rights and wrongs of that, but if you happen to be uh, perhaps a middle-aged male, and I'm not doing this like, oh, poor middle-aged white men, you know, whatever, but there is a point to be made there that if you you know, you might feel a little bit like George Eliot felt and think, well, yeah, maybe I do have to change my identity to get ahead these days, you know. And then, of course, they wouldn't because if they did that and it came out, it would cause a lot of a lot of issues probably. But, yeah, it's, it's very interesting. Now, as I say, I do appreciate your comments. Uh, this is just me thinking aloud, so please, there's no need to be angry or, you know, unkind about anything I've just said. Um, I just want to hear constructive uh, feedback and I want to know your own uh, points of view uh, with regarding the issues and things I've raised in this edition of Monday Musing. So thank you very much, everybody. Do have a fantastic day and look forward to seeing you all, whatever your gender, race, sexual persuasion, all of you, next time. Take care, everybody. Bye-bye. <music>